What's up, movie fans and Netflix bingers? This is the Bros Who Binge podcast. My name is Adam Schubert, and as always, I'm joined by Lyndon Burton. Lyndon, we are getting this in before the hurricane. Oh, well, let's, yeah, let's do that part. Yo, man, all right. Uh, Yeah, this is in before the hurricane. PSA to everybody in case there's no content this week. That is because either A, I'm without power, or B, majority of the staff is without power. But there is a contingency plan in place to where if it's the latter part where the staff is out of power, then I will do it with Ian. And then if it's with I'm without power, then I'll just go in my car, zoom and Ian will be in control of the recording. But that's the best case scenario. Just we, we got just want to let you guys know two hurricanes are coming to where our main studio and majority of our panelists live. So it's going to be a rough week. Just got to hold out hope just because they're tropical storms and at, at worst, a category one that power it should be like two category ones. Well, it's going to be a category one one day and then a category one another day. Ugh. So and the thing is, when we've had category ones, I've lived through a couple to where we didn't lose power and it was just like a rainy, really, really rainy night. So it could be that, but I've also been through category ones where power went out. So you never know how it's going to go. So and it's like, if it's be prepared, if you get through one and then maybe you don't get through a second. I don't know. Yeah. And that's the thing. So we got to, hopefully everything goes through because we have a big run it back this week. You guys have chosen. I love this poll system. Thank you to the community for everybody who's been responding you guys have chosen for us to review Goodfellas for the first running back. It'll be me, Schubert, and Ian. Shout out to our editor, Ian. But yeah, man, I'm 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 super excited for that. Cause to say that our first film is a Scorsese film, I'm hype. We'll just go Tarantino the next time. But a Scorsese film to start off, I am hype. But you guys will hear about that on Thursday, because that's when it'll be out, uh, assuming that everything goes right. But Schubert. DC fans, we oh, man. need to. the fire has been relit. Oh, brother! Like you know me, I'm always a DC fan. It will never die. But doing with with filming because you remember how a, a crack addict I was to the Batman Batman leaks, and the leaks died down. Corona hit. There wasn't any major DC news. No Comic Con like. Everything that was I was hyped for was the boys, Mandalorian, like a lot of Amazon streaming shit. The and, stuff that was done. Yeah, the stuff that was finished. Like there was no need for me to be hyped for movies that I didn't know could come out. Like the only thing I should be hyped for is Tenant. And if Tenant drops, maybe we'll get other movies. We'll get to that later in the show. But the fandom, like we're not starting the show right now, but I want to just applaud. And I know D a lot of people were upset that DC had a lot of those firings, which I'm sure a lot of those people worked on this before they got fired. But still, congratulations to the D to DC Comics and to Warner Brothers because that was an amazing, amazing event. I want to talk about how to put on a virtual con? If anybody, if if that was way better than Comic Con at home, Comic Con at home felt like dull, bland, like I was just watching a YouTube show. This yeah. felt like an interactive experience with the fans. This felt like they put time into it. This felt like they put care into it. And Marvel and Disney, y'all are on notice because if this works, DC's going to keep, well, it, not if it works, because it did work. If, if next year DC realizes like, yo, we don't necessarily have to go to Comic-Con. We can do our own events and sell tickets. They're probably going to do it. And, I have never been to Comic-Con, but it's a dream of mine to go, which I will go eventually with this podcast. Me and Schubert are going to go cover it. But if DC fandom happens, I'm more inclined to buy, to buy a ticket for that than waiting for media passes because that's how dope of a festival that was. And it just, you got to tip your cap to them because like they could have came in and did a bunch of bullshit and just threw shit together. But like they were well prepared. They had, they knew what excitement they were going to bring. They knew the level of like announcements they had to have. They announced the, the entire new slate. They announced games. They announced TV shows. They were like, if you were a DC fan, this is for you. And it was so great 
that I saw Marvel media members being like, I can't lie. Everything that they've announced and everything that they've shown looks fucking amazing. Even the Snyder cut. Like, you know, that was a good event when the Snyder, when I have flipped positions on the Snyder cut once again, but that's going a little too ahead of the show. What did you think of the con? I mean, I thought it was a really well done event. It was good that you could pop in and out um, and catch all, all of what you needed. I mean, of course, if you weren't following it closely, you could catch all the main on points Twitter. on Twitter. Yeah. Um, but I think for the fans who really wanted knowledge, the panels gave you that. Now, some did. Like, yeah. for example, the Suicide Squad panel, I wish they talked more about the movie instead of playing a game. Well, they did but, give you beside uh, behind the scenes. Yeah, and we'll get and we'll get to all of that. I guess they did talk about the movie with because they gave us two trailers, the reveal of everybody and then the... Uh, and then the uh, and then the behind the scenes deal. Yeah, behind the scenes deal. We'll get to all of that, but just super, super excited. This was, like I said, this was an amazing event. Like it really was. And and being that Star Wars celebration was supposed to happen this year, I could see that happening in a fandom style at home event. Yeah, I mean the difference there is that you know DC Warner Brothers kind of is their own deal and I feel like Star Wars would be under the like this Disney deal. They could do it with D3. Like, I mean not with D3, I D23. Yeah, I mean, you know, they got to figure out how they would do that, but I think that DC doing it this way is them kind of just taking ownership in themselves, you know. Even Marvel's got a little bit of issues with like dealing with their Sony property too. So, you know, DC coming together proven you know that oh it's it always been the the knock against dc that they never seemed cohesive and yeah. i guess the first time it all seems like together it seems like there's a plan like a legitimate yeah. like not not fans media members who are fans trying to connect the dots to to paint a picture for them no it was like you guys don't have to guess here's the plan and like yeah. a lot of the stuff we called, which I gotta pat, I gotta pat ourselves on the back. A lot of the stuff we predicted, a lot of the stuff we didn't, and there were some shocking surprises. I think if you bet with us on our betting pool episode of what to expect from Fandom, I think you got a lot of money in return. But there were some misses, of course. But uh, I'm shoot, I'm ready because there's a lot to discuss. Also, right, we're yeah. discussing the the highest rated uh, VOD movie for two weeks in a row, Tax Collector. We're doing yep. continuing, continuing our Avatar rewatch with the, the finish of book two. And we got to talk about Lovecraft episode two, which was just absolutely nuts. Yeah, so we're definitely excited for Lovecraft, <laughs> Avatar, and the Tax Collector is definitely going to be an interesting topic. But we got to get into this DC fandom stuff. Let's get started. Anyway, so the first, let's just start it off with the the first big panel that we want to talk about, the Batman, while it's fresh in our heads. The Batman panel came out, Matt, uh, Aisha Taylor, or Tyler, um, brought out Matt Reeves and did a nice interview, and Matt Reeves gave us a lot of insight on what he was thinking when he was di- directing this, putting this together, His uh, casting Gotham, this. casting. Uh, inspiration of the Batman, how long it took, his designs on the bat suit, his thoughts on the universe, how this connects to his HBO Max show. There's so yeah. much to dive into before we even touch the trailer. So his idea of building a Gotham that's different from the Burton universe that was this uh, set-driven L.A. created over there piece, which was a lot of eccentric items and a lot of I don't want to say comic book Gotham because I think he's making it a comic accurate Gotham. I want to say a over the top gothic horror Gotham in the mind of Tim Burton. Then we see yeah. Christopher Nolan go to Pittsburgh and Chicago and make this real world grounded urban. Gotham, this yeah. urban, yeah, this this urban grotesque city. And Matt Reeves is in the in between of both because he went to Liverpool and took the origins like the OG Gotham centric uh designs with the gargles and stuff. Yeah, and he's gonna add in through CG buildings to make it look like a big city so it'll be an original Gotham that you can't pin anywhere. And I think he gave a great example of if we have a Gotham Square, but we were just to do it in Times Square, you'd know this is New York. But now if we do have a Gotham Square, it's like 
this feels like the actual city. He wants you to be transported to Gotham. And that's very comic booky. So I thought that was amazing. The suit took a year to design. The Batmobile took a year to design. Super, super dope and creative. And then the fact that he, I, I okay, this, this part, part I want to, I want to discuss with you. He said that the book that he used a lot of inspiration from the ego book, which after seeing the trailer, I do see the ego book by, uh, Darwin Cook, which I read last night at 4 a.m. after the panel in preparation for this podcast. But there's no way on God's green earth you can't tell me this wasn't inspired by Long Halloween, Hush, in Court of Owls. There's no fucking way. Like, he could say all he wants about ego. I get I get it. And that's maybe from the Batman perspective of how he wants to tell how Batman went through trauma. Maybe that's like a chunk of it, you know? Like, yeah, maybe a chunk of it is like that even, and then the other stuff bleeds into the, the other stories. Even the Catwoman stuff that was on ego fits in because it's a black cat woman. They explore the relationship between Bruce. But I think what's coming from ego is the status of Batman of how, because he, Matt Reeves even said this, he's in year two of this experiment. Matt Reeves kept calling this a criminology experiment that's being run by Batman to see if he can clean up the city. He has stats of when he started doing this and compared and things aren't getting better. So I think the part of ego that's inspired is because in ego, Batman is questioning his mission and his journey. He's been doing it for like six years and he's questioning if he's done it right. And I think that's the part of Robert Pattinson doing this experiment. And is it right in him really looking at his mission and at what he's doing and to see if he's doing it the right way? I think that's ego. Everything else is long Halloween. Like, and, and we'll get into that with the trailer and Court of Owls yeah. and Hush. But what it also looked like is and not taking from any references, just my perception of what I saw in the trailer is that this may be with the Riddler kind of calling out to him. This is like the first time he's like facing something like that. Yeah. Um, uh, especially when having to handle with the cops, like maybe he's gripping with the reality of, okay, well now my actions have a little bit of um, repercussions. Yeah. Like, like me being the Batman is like in turn, and in, instead of me cleaning up the crime, I'm in turn causing creating crime, the crime by being Batman. Yeah. Yep, and, and people's lives are at stake. But the yeah. reverse is that he's going to deal with is, yes, they're here, but if I don't stop them, they will keep killing, and they will keep coming. It will get worse. And I think that's what he's going to end up falling on, and I think we're going to see, by movie two, a closer vision of the Batman we know, because Mary's kept saying that as well. This is not This is the Batman that we know, but him growing to be that. Him not fully there yet. And you can see that with his combat boots. You can see that how he looks. You can see that with, like, everything. And that's what I love so much about that trailer. Uh, anything else from the panel that you think is worth discussing? It's, oh, the Gotham City Police Department TV show. Yeah. That's going to be fucking amazing. Like... Shout out to Amazon. Shout out to Warner Brothers. Shout out to DC for letting him do this. The fact that we're getting... This is Marvel-level stuff. Like, let's be honest. Falcon Winter Soldier is telling a story inside the MCU that's going to progress it forward that gives you insight to how the movies are going to be. Gotham City Police Department is going to tell Batman Year One through a corrupt cop and looking at the, the corruption in the cops. This could lead to season one being that uh, season two could be a look at between movie one and movie two. Season three could be Maybe. a look at between movie two and movie three. I could see that happening. And I wouldn't be surprised if in the season finale, we might not see Robert Pattinson's face, but we will see a Batman like figure. I wouldn't be surprised because in season one, he said the Batman is an urban legend. It's a myth. And since we're going to see it from the cop perspective, we could see like a flash leaving. You remember how we always would say with the mm -hmm. Joker movie, it, you don't necessarily have to see him. It could be a shadow. That's something that they can instill. And the fact that we're learning about the corruption, where the corruption began and how it, how it progressed from the TV show and looking at it from the movie, that's going to be amazing. And the fact that it's Terrence Winter, the writer of Boardwalk Empire and Sopranos, it doesn't get, oh, any, yeah. better. It doesn't get any better than that. No, I mean, that's definitely the right 
showrunners to be doing that and the big having it be such a big tie-in and the way that he was kind of describing that was just really exciting it had that, me, and i had goosebumps well i mean he was already talking about the corruption of gotham in the sh- in the movie and so even extending that farther would kind of give us even more backstory you know for assumptions of what you have with what the movie could be by the end of it uh that could be really good at showing us more of how that would all tie in yeah. or how it, it it has been growing for a while so um you know i'm really excited for more excited for the show now after that panel for sure um but now i think we can we can jump into talking about the trailer yeah um wow man like it was a really wow. good at like showing us everything and also masking everything. Like it's one of those things where you, when you had to go through a few more times, you know, most people didn't even recognize that they saw Colin Farrell and yeah. Paul Dana. Yeah. Because that it's had just to be so confirmed. unique and different. Yeah. Exactly. And all I got to say is, wow, man, this trailer, it solidifies your opinion of Robert Pattinson. It shows you, oh, this guy can not only be Batman, he can be Bruce Wayne. It shows you a glimpse of Jim Gordon, which you wanted. We got that. Yeah. We see how how Jeffrey Wright and his relationship is kind of akin to the Batman the Animated Series, but not quite there yet. Well, it looks like it's a strain. Like, that's what yeah. I was saying. Like, it seems like this is the first time he's seeing that he could be because of the crime. It seems like Gordon, in a sense, is like, it's for you kind of thing. Yeah, like Gordon's reaching out because he has no choice in there up his ass. But Gordon believes that this guy's making a difference and it's the start of their relationship. I love that we're yeah. seeing that start. I loved how when they're when he's when he's walking through and how all the FBI agents are like, what the fuck are you doing here? And it's just like it's interesting that Matt Reeves put the FBI there because it's like that in real life, the FBI would be there like. Yeah, there, there's a fucking serial killer killing political figures and high ranked figures in what appears to be New York City, the biggest city in, in America. So it's like they would have to be there. That was amazing. I thought seeing the duct tape with the the intro going in and then going out and then having the Riddler do it. I think having the Riddler look not like typical question marks everywhere with the top hat and the cane, making him have this green jacket with mask over his face with his glasses. I think with duct tape over his face with his glasses, I think that's very silly, serial killer vibe. I got yeah. heavy seven, heavy Zodiac, especially if you look at the note that he was given from sure. uh, Riddler, you see the little Zodiac signs at the bottom. But the theory that I have just to start it off already, if you look at, the card and he made sure this was really fast. You have to pause it at the right moment or slow down the footage, but there's an owl on the front and it, it asks a question. And I think that leads into movie two, us getting quarter vials. But I think that plays a huge role into Batman. Uh, what Paul Dano is saying he's he, in the, in the whole trailer, the through line is stop telling lies just you do got you guys don't realize what true justice is you're turning a blind eye to the corruption and then batman asks what does this have to do with me and riddler's like you're gonna find out you you are tied into this just as much as everybody else and i think that's gonna lead to finding out that thomas and martha wayne weren't these goody goody two shoes that we know and this this is something that comics have done throughout the years to where it's like Thomas and Martha Wayne weren't as, as good of people as the animated series and some of the early comics suggested. They were part of the corruption and they were tied into it. Thus, they were a part of the Court of Owls, which is this high-ranking society thing of Gotham who runs Gotham behind the shadows. And I think with the TV show and with this movie, we are getting that in season, in episode, in movie two, thus giving us a psychological mystery to solve, which Matt Reeves wants because this is 1000% a detective noir film that's based upon Chinatown, French Connection, and those taxi 70s driver. movies, in Taxi Driver. Even though I see a lot of Seven and Fincher in there, I don't feel like he wanted to say that because Fincher's a contemporary, but I get it. I 100% believe that, but we're also going to get a physical element with that by getting Talon, the mercenary of the Court of Owls. So I'm, I'm really excited for that, but that's movie two. Let's stick on yeah. movie one. I love the Riddler. I love, love that the Riddler's this Zodiac killer, this this guy, and 
the closest thing we've ever seen to a, a correct Riddler is kind of the Saw movies where he played, let's play a game. I'm going to leave clues. I'm going to put these people in these traumatic situations. And I think we're going to see that in this movie when you see the car driving and it's a bomb guy. And if Batman can solve the, the a, a suicide bomber and if Batman can solve it, he can stop the bomb from blowing up this this funeral or this or this and that and that it was Bruce Wayne. So maybe it's but the, you see later Riddler in the trailer test. Well, maybe it's him trying to test you know, the Gotham elites to find the, who the Batman is. You mm. know what I'm saying? Yeah, because the, the Batman but, I mean, definitely you know, shows up really fast. It's all speculation. Um, mm-hmm. But, I, you know, I'm really intrigued by Paul Dano. You know, we didn't see a lot of Oswald Cobblepot, but in the panel, Matt Reeves does say that this is kind of Oswald Cobblepot before he becomes like a kingpin. Yeah, this so is that, the start of him. And I think that means he's going to survive and stick around. Well, sure. I don't think he's going to go to jail. Also, he doesn't like being called. He has already been named the Penguin, but he doesn't like it. He's called Oz. Colin Farrell looks fucking immaculate. They went for... I'm so, I'm so glad they didn't do the Danny DeVito route. They literally did the route we've been asking for. The Iceberg Lounge businessman penguin but they gave him the distinguishable features they didn't make him pretty boy colin farrell they made him like this i thought it was salvatore maroney at first and i was like nah salvatore yeah. maroney's not in this movie but it looks like him but it, it's you see the hook nose and if you look at the eyes that's 1000 percent colin farrell he looks great catwoman looks great like yes, she's she is just a cat burglar right now. She doesn't have the full suit. I could see her getting the suit by the end of the movie. But I thought the little the little uh, mask, the little beanie worked perfectly just to let you know who they were. And then you see the fight scenes between them. I thought Selena looked great. Zoe Kravitz looks great doing some of those kick scenes fighting him. This trailer was just amazing. And the fact that Paul Dano is this serial killer type guy and they're trying to solve this these murders. It was immaculate. Like you said, the stuff with Jim Gordon, seeing him in the Gotham City Police Department, pushing those cops and Gordon like, no, bro, we got to do this this way or whatever, whatever Gordon's going to tell him. And then when you see him grapple up out of there, that's out of that same police department. And then the fight with those thugs also. Matt Reeves is a is a is a motherfucker for this by putting the guy with like the Joker style yeah, yeah. makeup, but black and white, and then showing us that oh, you guys don't think Robin Pattinson could be Batman? I'm gonna show you the most gruesome martial arts we have seen from any Batman, even more so than very, Affleck. Very uh, uh Arkham Knights at or you know when I'm you know what I'm talking about the Arkham games, very yep. like that where it's like pop 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 pop. Bow, bow, bow. Broke his arm, like like low key. Yeah, broke his and, arm. And everybody was like, Damn, "Hit him while he was down." Don't jaywalk in Gotham, or you're gonna get your ass beat by Robert Pattinson. <laughs> yeah, I was badass looking, man. And you know, you know, we got that look at the at the Batmobile. We heard Andy Serkis, Alfred. Yeah, his voice and the celebrity. Like, and I love that Paul Dano's voice was modulated, but Roberts wasn't. And I love the "I am vengeance" line, like. He yeah. sound it wasn't Christian Bailey. It was it wasn't like <sighs> too much of that. It was still deep, but you could understand it was a human behind it. It sounded more like Kevin Conroy than anything. Yeah. So I'm really intrigued by it. He only said that 25% of it has been filmed. And that's that crazy like that we yeah, that's crazy that only 25 has been filmed, and that's what we got. Like, and I'm assuming that's just like the beginning. And it it was just it blew me away, man. It truly blew me away. Like this looked Nolan esque in the sense of a, a of a dark noir film, but it still looked very comic booky. What did yeah. you feel about the suit? Because I think that we finally got the best look at the suit, and I think the suit looks good. Yeah, I think uh, I, I mean I like the suit. It's very practical for what's what, what where we're at in his career. Like that's why I like about the panel is that we're, when we're talking about the costumes, it was very unique to the person like obviously we saw paul dano took the riddler in a totally different way than we've usually seen before and uh with robert pattinson's batman it's simplistic yet detailed very arkham again very arkham game as you can tell mad reeves might have played that game even the bat logo is very arkham s but i see a lot of batman the animated series in this so we get so and just the story of the serial killers leading to to hush and not hush leading the quarter hours 
this looks good. This looks really, really good. I'm interested to see how Firefly, because we heard that he was one of the villains, how he's going to be involved. How, what's going to, what's Penguin's story going to look like? Is Batman just going to interrogate him? And then when he doesn't get the information, Penguin's going to leave. How much is Selena Kyle in this movie? And then how much yeah. do we get of the court of art? Like, there's so many questions, but this 100% looks like a murder mystery. And I, I couldn't be more excited as a Batman fan. Like, this is the trailer that we wanted. Now, they do say this is a separate Earth, and our theory was always for the multiverse for Flash to bring him over. It's going to be interesting to see if this Batman can play in the other world. I don't know if it can, but maybe, yeah, by, movie, maybe by movie three we'll see it because you got to understand, Matt Reeves also wants to put Robin in this. And seeing this trailer, I don't know how Robin fits, but maybe in the movie I'll understand more. So that's something we have to wait and see. Because this is so dark. If he brings a Robin in, that's going to be crazy. Yeah, I feel like that would have to be something that they would do down the line, not even in a second movie. It would have to be... Because you'd have to age up our pants a little bit more. I mean, if this is year two... If movie, well, I guess if he gets movie, Robin when, like, his first ten years, huh? Yeah, first five. First five. Yeah, first five. And, that, and that's what I'm saying. By movie two, it could have... Like, in the movie, post-credit, Robert Pattinson is having some downtime. He just solved the murder of this series. Or the he's Riddler. at the circus or whatever. Yeah. And he's at the circus. Like, I could see that happening. And also, what do you think of Robert Pattinson as Bruce Wayne? I like I like the long, longer hair. I don't know. He kind of looks like a, a dork. <laughs> like, honestly, like, he doesn't look like that suave. But, I mean, like, maybe that's just, like, I don't know. My Bruce, the my perception of Bruce Wayne has always been like you know from the con uh, from the cartoon where he's like you know very playboy. Su- suave playboy. So uh, I just don't know if like this this guy plays into that. He I seems think, a little angsty. I think you. I think that was because of what you said earlier, because it happened in that moment where we're seeing him seeing a note noted to him in this elite area and there's a bomb going off. I think that's why he looks angsty. I think we got to see him by himself wearing the quote unquote Bruce Wayne mask. And I think, yeah. I, and if anything, we've from the tenant trailers that we've seen, he can pull off suave. Sure. Yeah. I mean, that's the one thing I would mention from the tenant trailer. When we talk about that, it's, he, you know, his character in that m- movie looks like, the Bruce Wayne that we would come to expect. And I, and I think we're going to get that. Anything else from yeah. this trailer that you want to touch on? Not from the trailer, just th- that was a, a headline that came from later on is that the movie added Barry Ke- Kegahan to be Stanley Merkel, the oh, officer yeah, from, that teams up with Gordon. So from Dunkirk, I'm wondering how that's going to pl- play in. Because he yeah. is in like... He isn't a nobody actor, you know. So I mean, I feel like he may have a little bit of a role to play. And he's like, he's the corrupt cop. Or he'll die. That, yeah, he might die. That's the corrupt cop that Gordon partners with, and Gordon mm-hmm. hates. So I could see him definitely dying. It, it, man, it's just gonna be interesting. It's gonna be interesting to see how they handle if or I Riddler could see lives. Him working with Penguin or something. Something. I see if Riddler lives. If he goes to Arkham, but Paul Dano, this might be an Oscar level performance from him. It might be. Uh, yeah, maybe so. I I don't, that's going to be the interesting thing here is because the Nolan Batman's kind of, you know, put them in the Oscar discussion, obviously, you know, with Heath Ledger doing what he did. Um, but in the era of the MCU, like there really hasn't been like any actor who's put up any sort of performance. Yeah. And even that, wasn't that more to do with Sony? Uh, Fox. Fox. I mean, Fox. Yeah. So that wasn't even like through through uh, the main studios. So I just don't know, you know, even as good as Wonder Woman was, Gal Gadot wasn't getting nominated for Oscars or anything. But I like feel that. like this is a di- you you tell already from the trailer. This is a different level of film than what Wonder Woman 1984 even is like the 1984 trailer was cool. The Snyder Cut trailer was cool. This was on a totally different. This was like this was like, OK. He's going for it. Like, Matt Reeves is really swinging for the fences. You know, what I was about to say was that Joker probably is what takes this to the next level with the success that Joker was given um, in the Oscars. I think that 
people are going to start taking this seriously. And obviously the filmmakers are, ma- are taking it seriously as um, that sort of cinema as well. So shout out to shout out to Matt Reeves. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Shout out to Mattson Tomlin, who also wrote the film. Just thank you to everybody involved. Thank you to Robert Pattinson. Like, I understand now why every fucking two weeks a cast member was like, we're super excited about this movie. Matt Reeves' vision is incredible. It's not a Gotham you've seen before in movies. And it makes sense. Like, everything they were saying, now that we've seen a trailer, makes sense. And the fact that we got a two-minute and 30-second trailer. Like, wow. Wow. That's a lot. I did not... 25%. I did not expect that on DC fandom. I thought we were going to maybe see like a couple characters and that's it. We got a sense of the movie. We got a sense of the tone. The theme was even underlined with the Nirvana song. Like you could hear the the theme from the uh, costume yeah. reveal in the background mm-hmm. and the way they fused it with the Nirvana song. I really dug and just everything about it. It was just a great presentation. Yeah. I mean, it was um, definitely the star of the night yeah. or the whole day. And like, you know, you, you expected that maybe, uh, Suicide Squad and what we had gotten from that. Maybe even Black Adam was going to be the one, the thing that you talked about, but it no. ended up being Batman. No, he stole the show, and rightfully so. But let's get to another trailer. We got the Wonder Woman trailer. It was cool. Release this thing. If we if we can get Tenant and it all goes without a hitch, and not and the whole America doesn't get coronavirus. Yeah, this movie should be out. You know. Like put 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 that junk out. I want to see it more than Black Widow. That's for sure. Yeah, that is a fact. I one thousand percent want to see it more than Black Widow. Shout out to Kristen Wiig, man. I'm buying her cheetah with I'm this trailer. It, yeah. I'm buying it one thousand percent. And I love how it starts off that she's a superhuman at first, and then like she's not strong enough. So I'm guessing she goes back to Maxwell Lord and like give me more power. And Maxwell's like, you sure? And then she turns to the cheetah because one of the lines that that stuck out to me was. Oh no, Barbara! What have you done? Said by Wonder Woman. Yeah, right. Yeah, that was, and it's good that they're gonna be kind of true to the story of all that. How they're um, kind of friends, and then like how they're friends, and like that's what. But that made me feel it, and like that's why Gal does a really good job of being Wonder Woman. She just like makes me feel Wonder Woman this whole way through, and like she, she definitely like is Wonder Woman. Yep. In in every sense of the way, like I you know. I'm excited to to see what she does next and what's going to be next out of this whole world. And uh, when we get to talking about Flash, obviously that's kind of the whole deal. But you know, what are we going to get out of Gal moving forward? Yeah. After yeah. after this, what's going to be the third movie? I love the scene in the trailer where Cheetah jumps up and Wonder Woman flips over her and grabs her and throws her down, but Cheetah lands on her feet like nah. Uh, cats land on their feet but she didn't say that that was just like the vibe i got and i love the golden suit i love seeing wonder woman fly up with the wings i love seeing her lasso the lightning just just everything about this movie looks so cool and so wonder woman it's not the batman trailer but it looks damn good and like you said i'm more excited for this than black widow this just needs to come out yeah it would have already came out so let's just get get that going yeah 100 Um, percent but next was Aquaman, which they really didn't mention much about it, just that uh, Ocean Master coming. was coming back. Yeah, and it's going to be very uh, effective to what's going on in the world. It's going to be very uh, reflective. So we're going to see how they do that. That's pretty much it. And it's going to be after Flash. So, I mean, that's probably going to have to do a lot with what's going on. This yep. Flash is kind of going to be the tone center. And there's center. a lot of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Oh, there are going to be a lot of horror elements. But let's talk about Flash. Ezra Miller's still the Flash as of now. I know a lot of media members were upset, but like he is, it is what it is. We see the new suit that apparently Batman's going to give him. Ben Affleck's going to be in the movie as well as Michael Keaton. And the way I see this going down is Ben Affleck gives him the suit at the start of the movie. Ben Affleck's there with him. And then he goes back in time, sees Michael Keaton, has their interaction, creates the multiverse. And then I think when he comes back, maybe... He's in. He doesn't see Ben Affleck's Batman. He doesn't see a Batman. He doesn't know where he is. Leaving the door open for maybe Robert Pattinson to come through. But 
I definitely think, and everybody's like, oh no, we're going to get more Snyderverse. We're going to get more Ben Affleck Batman. I don't see that happening. I just think this is Ben Affleck finishing out his deal and giving us I was hearing like movie. some rumors that they might even include Grant Gustin in it or something like that. I could see that happening as like a cameo. Some, yeah, because, because, because Grant Ezra gave him his name. Ezra wasn't called yeah. The Flash until the CW TV show when he appeared, which I think is cool. It's good for all those people who've watched the CW movie, CW TV shows all this time and they've wanted connectivity. Well, you got it now. So like, that's where I think that we could kind of really skirt through the multiverses here is like, you know, if Grant Gustin gets thrown into the whole thing, then like, you know, maybe Ezra ends up in a different multiverse with this Batman. But it's like, it's like a multiverse that... I think like the way that the multiverses are going to work is that you can still have a multiverse that has our Wonder Woman and our Aquaman, but then this Batman. Like, yeah. So. I whatever. think he's gonna. I think I think the way they're gonna do it is they're gonna the way when he births it. There's gonna be all these different Earths, but I think something's gonna happen where Prime Earth fuses with the Robert Pattinson Earth. I think there's going to be some amalgamation where he messes up the timeline, thus giving him a new Batman. It's going to be interesting to see, but I think that's going to be later down the line once we see Matt Reeves' three movies and once we get his idea, if they want to bring him in, that'll be something where they have the option too. But the concept art of Flash, his new suit looked great. But uh, something that got me that was a shocking news so to speak, during the Milestone panel, which is the stuff created by Dwayne McDuffie, uh, Reggie Hunlin, and I'm, and I'm forgetting the artist's name. I'm so sorry. I apologize to, to you, but he was, he's a great artist who did all of this. The Milestone universe is the universe that was created by Black independent comic creators where we got all new original Black characters like Icon and Rocket, uh, Hardwire, um, and Static Shock, among others. And that's coming back to comics. We're getting new animated movies. They said new animated TV shows. So I'm excited to see more Icon, Rocket, Hardwire. But what we are getting live action, it was announced from Reggie Hunlin that we're getting a Static Shock movie is officially in development, which I think is long overdue. I think they could have done an animated movie like they did with Spider-Verse with Static Shock. Static Shock sure. has just so, so many good characters with the Big Bang and all the different uh, Bang Babies they create, which are just mutants, quote unquote. And then in having his friends and just his universe in Dakota, it works so well. And let's give DC their young teen hero, whereas we're going to get Batman movies that are for adults. We're going to get some of these adult-centric movies. Let's give Static Shock for the teens and the kids. That's, that's true. I think, yeah, Static Shock would pr- probably be the most Marvel MCU-esque movie of the bunch. Besides that and Shazam. Besides Shazam. Um, so, like, I feel like... Th- I, the question is, is how far down the line does it come? Because that's going to determine casting. Yeah. Obviously, it would be someone who, you know, possibly someone who's like in their early 20s because they can pass as high school. But yep. it's going to be someone that's going to be playing a high schooler. Yep. So you know, this I, is the, the Tom Holland of the group, I guess you could say. Yeah. And this is something that I'm super excited for because Static Shock is one of the best DC characters out like. He is in a, that TV show won Emmys for a reason. That TV show was great for a reason that we all watch. There's a reason why that show fused with the Justice League and we had episodes where Static would go with Batman Beyond and Batman and whatnot. That show was good and it, and it, it just works. So good job on Static. I'm super excited for that. Yeah, Static is the perfect uh, off ca- offshoot character of the Justice League to kind of incorporate right now. Yep. Um, you really need a kind of a teen star. And it and shouldn't be the Flash. Perfect. Like, it, it, they shouldn't do the Flash like he's this young guy. Like, I'm glad that they're kind of retconning that to where yeah. the Flash is going to be taken seriously. Not saying that Static won't, but let's make Static this young character that can attract younger audiences. Let's not make it Flash. And I think it just works better that way. Yeah, he also has really dope powers, and I want to see him fly around on lids. Oh, yeah. On, on, sewer on his, lids. On his disc. Uh, when yeah. Re- when uh, what's what's his guy's name? Reggie, I think his name is, or Ron, whatever his his white friend's name is, who makes him all his gear when they uh make their stuff. That's gonna be super super dope. So to see. Also, speaking of Shazam, 
uh, Shazam. We didn't get much from it. They just Fury of the Gods. It. Yeah, we, they just announced the second movie. I don't know if that's going to be the one where Black Adam comes in, but maybe at the end for the third Probably. movie. Probably. But may if it's titled Fury of the Gods, I could see that happening. But Black Adam was also announced. We saw concept art from that. We got that. The, we got big announcements from it, too, that we're going to have Hawkman, Cyclone, Adam Smasher. And I know for you, at least, the big announcement Huge. was that we're going to get Dr. Fate. That is huge for future movies and future series because we know J.J. Abrams doing a doc, uh, a dark, a Justice League uh, dark series on HBO Max. You can best believe that this Dr. Fate or whatever they talk about in Black Adam with Dr. Fate is going to end up on that show. So that's connectivity there. That is huge that we're going to see the helmet of Naboo being that we have been big fans of Young Justice and just we understand like how important that is to the dc universe it's one of the strongest I mean, things. even in the uh, cartoon justice league from when we were kids too yep so this guy is if if you like dr strange dr fate is 10 times stronger and his magic is very 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 powerful so shout out to the rock man the rock's gonna be fighting the jsa so i'm excited to I see how that goes his, i thought that panel was well went well because the rock really seemed like he's wants to be a big part of building the Black Adam lore. He seems very into it. At, you know, him and Noah Santino talking, you know. Um, I also think this, this will be the one really that... got me excited about this movie. I think this will be for teens, whereas Static Shock's for the kids slash teens. I think this Black Adam will be that PG-13, like, for those teens. Well, and, and... it's going to be a rock movie. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's going to be... It's going to be, you know, Jumanji. Yep, and he's going to end up fighting Shazam at some point, so... yeah. <laughs> All right. He's going to fight a bunch of C- CG characters. Yep. But next up, we got the Suicide Squad announced who's playing who, and we got a behind the scenes. We were Everybody was wrong on Idris Elba. Idris Elba is playing Bloodsport, who was uh, introduced in a Superman comic as this guy who lost his brother and just started killing people because his brother got injured in like some scientific experiment or some shit and got put into a vegetative state. So he's playing blood sport and uh, black guards played by P Davidson peacemaker, who is this, this vigilante who is doing everything to achieve peace is played by John Cena. We yeah. Have- described as douchey captain America. Yep. We got Peter Capaldi, who's doctor who coming in as the thinker coming in as the real looking thinker. I know flash TV fans are like, damn, Ah, uh, that thinker is real. Um, yeah, right. Also, uh, also uh, Fula Borg is Javelin. Uh, Mongal is very interesting, and I think that plays into Superman later down the line because we could get a Mongol. Uh, so the sister of Mongol, if you know from the Justice League animated series or from Young Justice, that is the people who run World uh, War World that comes through and it you it takes the heroes from it, brings them there to fight for the championship to save earth or whatever. So dope that she's in there. Um, um yeah. yeah. You got um male oh yeah you mentioned Mongol that da- Daniela Mel- Mel- Melchior is we're gonna play Rat Catcher 2. Yes and um, presumably sure related to, to the, the Batman right. villain. He he made sure to say Rat Catcher 2 so I'm assuming in this world there's a Rat Catcher 1. Yeah. Um you mentioned King Shark uh Sean Gunn is gonna play Weasel, Weasel. Basically, Which, DC's villain, Rocket Raccoon. Yeah. Um, Michael Rooker, of course, the James Gunn u- usual. He's going to play Savant. Yep. Um, who uh, runs afoul of the Birds of Prey in his efforts to discover Batman's true identity. So that's what they said about him. Uh, Alice Braga is going to play Sul Soria, which is a seemingly new character created for the film, who is likely related to the comics character of Juan Soria, who joins the Suicide Squad after getting rejected by the Justice League. Um, oh, of course, Harley Quinn. Yeah. Um, Viola Boomerang. Davis. Joel I love Rick. Fl- I love Joel Kim Kinnaman is rocking the comic accurate Rick Flag costume, and James Gunn said he was inspired by seventies comics of. The uh, gosh, how am I uh forgetting the guy who the John Ostrander Suicide Squad run? Well, this movie looks like a John Ostrander comic with all the bright colors and and sure. all that stuff. Uh, but shout out interesting to- cast of group. The one we haven't mentioned yet was David Dallas Malkian. He's playing Polka Dot Man, which I think is going to be a real deep cut. 
and real, Nathan real fun. and Nathan Nathan Fillion's TDK, which I'm assuming is that like lost lost limb man. And, yeah, it's uh, uh, what it says about here on it. From what I have is another seemingly new character whose name invokes the Suicide Squad character Knockout, a female villain with super strength. Uh well, so that's what I have about that. It'll, it'll either be that or the guy who loses his arms constantly or whatever. Because I saw something where it's like his his thing had like meat, like all, his arms were like it was. It's weird. So we're gonna see what, what what Nathan Fillion does. But with all these characters, it just tells me we're finally gonna have a Suicide Squad where people die. And they said it's ba- it's it's a it's basically a war movie, but with a su- with a superhero take on on a war movie and this is going to be dirty dozen i think we're going to see the first like i said i think we're going to have two squads marvel robbie's going to be on the second squad with idris elba i think the first squad dies like fairly recently in like the the weasel yeah the fuel of the javelin maybe savant maybe uh rat well no i think rat catcher 2 will make it like polka dot man so th- those types of homies, Blackguard, like I think Pete Davidson's out, like gone early, early in this movie. I think yeah. the only people that make it to the second team is like Peacemaker, Bloodsport, Boomer, Boomerang might die, but I think he makes it. Harley Quinn and like Ratcatcher 2. Maybe, maybe. But the behind the scenes look good. James Gunn said this is his it really favorite. Did says this is his favorite movie he's ever made. He says he really, uh, this is the biggest movie he's ever made. And he said he likes the cast mo- the most he's ever worked with. So shot- shots to you, Chris Pratt and Zoe Saldana. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think this was a really cool cast. James Gunn seems really excited about it, which makes me really excited about it. Um, I think what you put up a poll on Twitter this week about what, yeah, I did. After DC Fandom, what were you the most excited about? I personally voted for Suicide Squad. Ah, because, you were part of that. Because I feel that what they gave me in the panel with this behind the scenes, seeing how passionate it seems that the cast and the crew are about this film makes me really excited about a movie that obviously didn't go so hot in the beginning and really kind of needed to redeem itself. You know, everyone knows that you're going to go watch the Batman. But I think Suicide Squad kind of cemented that they are must see. Oh, all right, look, all right, I'm not mad at that. And speaking of that poll, the Batman won with 53%. Suicide Squad came in at 10%. Wonder Woman at 13%. And Flash slash Black Adam at 24%. A lot of people are ready for that Flash Black Adam movie. Interesting that Wonder Woman got a higher percentage than Suicide Squad because I'd say I'm more excited for Suicide Squad than Wonder Woman, if I'm being Facts. honest. And I'm more excited for Suicide Squad than Flash and Black Adam. But shout out to everybody who voted in yeah. that poll. Uh, next Here. up, we got. Oh, go Here, ahead. No, we're we're and to move into the next thing. I want before we talk about what I think you want to talk about with TV. I want to talk about the one video game that I was the most excited about: Gotham Knights. Ah, oh, yeah, it looks really good. That looks so cool. What we're gonna have: Tim Drake, Jason Todd, Bad Girl, and Barbara, Dick Gordon, Grayson, and Dick Grayson. Yep. All in one video game, you get to choose who you want to be. Yep, you get to choose your Gotham Knights that you want to that you want to rock with, and they're going in a battle against the Quarter Owls, and that's gonna be a litty. I'm hyped for that. Is that a little bit of alliteration or not alliteration? But you know, uh, not uh, foreshadowing. Foreshadowing. Possibly. I chose my wrong literary term. Possibly. I could definitely see that being the case. Also, we got a Suicide Squad game. We saw the trailer. Brainiac's the villain. He took control over Superman and the Suicide Squad has to go kill him. So that's going to be that looks litty. We didn't see any gameplay from that, but the gameplay footage from Gotham Knights looks really good. I'm going to be playing Red Hood to start, but I'm going to switch over to Nightwing at some point. Never going to play as Tim Drake or Barbara Gordon. I might play as Tim Drake. Um, I'm not mainly just Red Hood and Nightwing. That's how I'm rocking it. It all depends on how how it all goes, but I I want to get those batons out. Definitely. <laughs> and speaking of Nightwing and Red Hood, let's get to Titan season three. Well, it's confirmed that Kieran Waters will be playing Red Hood in season three Woo-hoo. of Titans. We're also going to get a time skip inside of that season, which is going to be dope. So I think inside he, of it. OK, yeah. Like, I think the beginning will see him kind of similar journey. to that in, in the season where we had we finished up the Rachel arc and then had that time skip 
get to the next part of the story in last season. Yep, I think we're going to see that again where we like f- first maybe two, three episodes we're following Jason Todd and what he's doing and just seeing how the team's going down and then we're going to flash forward and then he's, I think he's going to be Red Hood. I don't think he's going to die. I think this is more so he feels betrayed by the team and thus he's choosing this path. So it's going to be interesting to see his take on Red Hood. But Barbara Gordon has been confirmed. She's the commissioner of the Gotham City Police Department. She has a pass with Dick Grayson. So she's wary of the Titans being in Gotham. That's another thing. The Titans are in Gotham and it's been confirmed that Scarecrow will play a factor. However, rather than terrorizing Gotham City, he's going to be used as an Arkham Asylum inmate who offers services as a profiler and consultant for the GCPD. Whoa. And... That means he's going to be a consultant for like Dick in, in the Titans. So I think that's going to be a big change and very interesting. Are you excited? Keep for an that? eye on that, though. I feel yeah. like there's still going to be a little bit of nefarious things going on with that. But the Titans Once living in Illinois Gotham now. That makes sense for this whole Red Hood deal. Um, I and feel Barbara like, Gordon. Well, of course, because especially if she's the commissioner of the Gotham City Police Department. But uh I don't know what what Batman might factor into this because we do have a Batman in this universe. So yeah, um, I don't know what th- what that all means, but this is a really crazy way to go with Scarecrow. Um, and but I'm really excited to see how it goes. They have a, a, a lot of it filmed, right? Yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. The panel. Or they was it the opposite? They didn't. Get, the, they were about to start. They were about to start, and I think yeah. they started again in like September into September, early October. So we, we're looking for like a May of 2021, if everything gets filmed at the time, a May 2021 release, June, and it's going to be on HBO Max. So Red Hood, I assume, would be like the villain then, huh? Yeah, but also you got to remember we got Blackfire. So I feel like Blackfire... Blackfire, Blackfire, yeah. Blackfire's like a B-plot, Red Hood's like an A-plot. I pro- I'd say they probably alternate that. Yeah, so we're going to see. But I'm excited for Titans, man, on HBO Max. Cool, yeah, me too. Um, But that was pretty much all we have at the DC fandom. Solid. Um, Solid solid weekend of stuff. It was one after the other. And, um, you know, I I remember texting you at the end of it and we're, like, ready to just talk about it because it was just so much to get through. Yeah. Um, I guess one one more DC thing to mention is that the Batman The Long Halloween is going to get a two-part animated feature film adaptation. I thought that was pretty worth noting. That's awesome. And it's just it's leading into what's going on with Matt Reeves and everything. And I think Long Halloween is overdue for a film adaptation. We've gotten Hush. We've gotten Killing Joke. Long Halloween is going to be right up that alley of just good Batman animated content. So I'm excited for that. We also got the final Tenant trailer. The movie's dropping September 3rd. And me and Schubert will be in NOLA watching that. So you guys will get a Tenant review. We're putting our lives on the line for, for you guys. But we're going to watch it. IMAX. I'm hype. I know you're hype. This trailer looked good. Travis Scott is, did a song in it. Uh, John yeah, David Washington looks like a star. When he was punching that dude, it was just like, yes, John David in action. We even got a look at Aaron Taylor Johnson, a tiny look at it as, a as he's, look. A, he's like this military commander. Robert Pattinson looks good in this movie. This movie just looks very, very entertaining to me. This trailer was just kind of cementing why you have to risk your life to go see it. It's going to be an event film uh, the perfect way to come back from not having movies for a while because, I mean, it's going to be one of those movies I feel like you'll be talking about as you talk about Memento, Inception, yep, The Dark Knight, all of Nolan's masterpieces. This is just another one of those. I agree. So I am hype for Tenet. And we, like I said, we will be reviewing it uh, for the week of September September 2nd. So um, well, the pod that's after the September 2nd, because September 2nd is a Wednesday. So that following Monday, we will have a Tenet review. So I am hype. Very hype. Very hype on Tenet. Um, Look, next, this is our final we, story. Yeah, next, there's a little bit of Marvel stuff going on, but not necessarily MCU, but Sony Marvel. Olivia Wilde is going to do a Spider-Woman. Yeah, and Jessica J- Drew. And uh, JC Chandor who directed Triple Frontier, is going to direct Craven the Hunter. Um, I'm more excited for the Olivia Wilde. I don't think we should get a Craven the Hunter until 
we actually get Craven the Hunter in like the MCU movie, which they're looking to do in, in Spider-Man 3. Well, this is just them being like, oh, we made money bunny on Venom. But the pr- issue is that Craven the Hunter is not Venom. Venom yeah. is like one of the most recognizably known comic book villains in all of comic book villainhood. Like yep. that's why that's why it made that much money. Yeah, no, I agree. That's like making a a, a movie about a. Well, I'm it's like instead of, instead of trying to make road. a movie about the Joker, you choose like Mr. That, Freeze, that you, Scarecrow. Yeah, like someone who's dependent on Batman. No, for and, sure. And Craven is one thousand percent dependent on Spider Man. So I'm more interested in him being in Spider Man three, and they, they're interested in Joel Kinnaman, and also Joel Kinnaman and Tom Holland have a friendship. So. Maybe after Joel Kinnaman's Suicide Squad run, he goes play Craven the Hunter, and there was some fan art of him doing that, and he looks good as it. But good for Olivia, uh, Olivia Wilde. I'm excited for the Jessica yeah, Drew. Yeah, what you said, Spider- Jessica Drew? Yeah, Jessica Drew. What do we know about Jessica Drew? I think she, I, I want to say she's like this private eye or this lawyer type. Because I, I thought I remembered reading a little bit about it when that first came out. Hold on, I'm about to pull up Jessica Drew, just like a little bit about her. I'm not too knowledgeable. I just know she's the Spider Woman character in red that has like the wings and whatnot. Yes, um, with the with the yellow, where like she gets her powers from. Uh, she was exposed some kind of experiments or yeah, something. Yeah, she was exposed with, with to Hydra uranium. And she like was a part of Hydra for a while. She was exposed to uranium, and they put an experimental to save her life. Her father put like this experimental serum that was based off a of spider's blood in her, thus giving her her power. She's from London. She moved to the U.S. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to see what she. Yes, yeah, she, she has Hydra connections, and then yeah, so that that's. That's what it is, man. So yeah, Hydra connections, uh, secret agents type type stuff going on. So dope, 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 dope. Uh, she has ties to Ben Grimm and the Thing. So I hope this is more Marvel than Sony because she has Shield connections. Like she's tied deeply into like not necessarily the Spider lore, but more so the secret agent world of Shield. And dealing with the fantastic, which is story. why, like, I'm wishing like this wasn't a part of Sony, bro. Yeah, she's a private eye, so that's what she does. I can imagine life. if this was in the MCU, this would be so dope. Yeah, this would be. That's like, what I'm hoping. This could have been. This could have been something that really could have like revitalized the Shield television show because that's supposed to end. Like, what if they made like Spider Woman? Like, well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, so Shield ended. Like, you know, how how do you carry on doing a Shield type thing? Well, they're doing Sword. Also- Oh well, there you go. Yeah, they're there because you know our sword is the new thing where they it's yeah. fighting off space and aliens. So um, it's gonna be interesting to see them going to space with sword. But I agree, man. Jessica Drew should be in the MCU. She fits better, especially in the like. MCU. But you know, of course, I think I guess we are getting a new Black Widow probably with Florence Pugh. Yeah, um, that's that's the assumption. We don't know yet. But since sure, we're but... not getting Jessica Jones, she kind of fits that private eye uh, detective like role. And I think that would be dope, especially since Jessica Drew is more tied to Nick Fury, the Fantastic yeah. Four, than well, Spider-Man. Like, what, so like what I'm confused with how Sony would do this is would they just create their own shield? Uh, or just make her like verse? Yeah, make her, her like a Nick spy. Fury? I, maybe not even that. Just make it like she's consulting for because she's from London. Let her consult for MI6. MI6, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I it's don't just, know. Yeah, I don't know either. But it's just the hard thing with like this whole. That's where Marvel is messed up with the whole DC thing. Like, you know, Marvel's MCU is intact, but like this whole deal with all this like X Men and Spider Man stuff. You know, it, it all needs to get get fixed. DC owns all their content. That's what that is. But. Let's get into the movie on the rise where we suggest a TV show or movie for you guys to watch this week. Schubert, what you got? Um, I want to let people know that Cobra Kai is heading to Netflix this week. So I haven't gotten a chance to watch the show, but this is a good opportunity for me to do it. So I hope to check that out in the, in the coming weeks. And also there's a movie coming out on the 28th on Hulu called The Binge. It's pretty much, if you haven't seen the trailer or anything about it, it's like a, um, it's like the purge, but mm. except instead of killing people once a year, everyone just does all the drugs. Oh, real? Okay. So it's like it's a party movie. 
Oh, okay, cool, cool. That's what's up. Yeah, it's a co- party movie comedy. So, you know, something fun. Oh, real? Okay. Well, I'm trying to pull up the new to VOD movies because there's a new uh movie with your guy from Stranger Things. What's his name? What, uh, the Joe Keery? Yeah, let me look up Joe Keery. Joe Keery has a new movie out right now that I wanted to suggest. Yeah, you're talking about Steve, huh? Yeah. So, yeah. That's his oh. name is Joe Keery? Yeah, but uh, is it Spree? I, th- I no. think... No, it is Spree. Yeah, it is oh, Spree. That- Spree's out now. Yeah, that's what I wanted to suggest to people. Where it's like this... Uh, It's basically Spree's like this... Horror, this new age horror film, kind of like American Psycho, but for 2020. And basically, let me read you the uh, the plot. Kurt Kunkel is a young man who's obsessed with being a social media star and becoming viral. He frequently live streams and makes video content, but rarely su- surpasses more than a single digit of views. A child he used to babysit, Bobby, is now an internet star who streams and has high viewer numbers, making Kurt jealous and relying on Bobby to spread Kurt's videos. Kurt, who works as a driver for a rideshare app called Spree, fits out his car with cameras and begins a new live stream one day titled The Lesson, where he instructs viewers on how to get social media famous. Bobby follows to share the stream with his viewers while later leaving disparaging Kurt. Uh, comments on Kurt's stream, uh, Kurt starts picking up passengers and poisoning, poisoning bottles of water that he hands to them, killing them, and thus going on a killing spree that he's filming with a viral video. And it's in like they have a lot of camera angles from the iPhone, and they say it's very American Psycho, but for the new generation. Yikes. So shout out to Joe Keery. That's my movie on the wise this week. Spree. Yeah, the one thing I wanted to mention too about the binge is uh, Vince Vaughn's in it. He's like, he's not the star, but he's like one of the one of the main draws, I suppose. Nice. Shout out to shout out to Vince Vaughn. But yeah, I'm excited for a little dumb comedy this week. All right, we getting the tax collector. Yeah, let's get into the tax collector. Holmes. Three fourths of this movie was good. Three fourths. I think the the, <laughs> the the final fourth does not land. Didn't really like the ending. Like the revelation with his dad, but didn't like how I just ended like that. I thought there was a lot of are we sure's in this movie. Like there were there were some ways, and I like David Ayers and I like his movies, but there was some scenes where were very amateur very david very, airy the david airy very Arizons. amateur i was just like bro like i'm sorry like this the actress that was playing his wife had like some deliveries or like some cuts from where like they delivered her shots that made her look just corny as shit and i yeah. was just like i was like oh dude, this is pulling me out but like <laughs> I liked I liked Shia. His character didn't really have as much to do as I would have liked, but like, it wasn't I, what they sold us. So basically, but there were this- some scenes that like I really dug him. Like the scene where he's talking about, he's like, oh, the, he's like hillside, like talking I like, all they, bitch. like yeah, yeah, was- like they they're on the come up now. Like I fucked every girl in in that neighborhood. Let's go fuck them up, yeah. Like and that was really cool. And then like even. The, how emotional he was with like the family where he was like, you didn't invite me to your like uh, niece's quince. Like, or when he was like, want, we like go ride for you. Like right before yeah. the, the big scene where he's he like, gets captured, he's like, bro, all these people in here were hitters. We're going to ride for you. We're going to help you. Basically this movie is this guy is the son of this super drug Lord and he's collecting money for them, him and Shia. And this new guy comes in to take over the territory, starts killing all this guy's family, killing everybody he cares about. And this guy has to sack up and basically go defeat this this devil worshiping, Satan worshiping gang banger and defeat him and uh, t- save his father's empire. That's pretty much it. Some of the moments that were for me, I was like, yo, is this blood really gonna if there's some new dude taking over gang territory, if you're the bloods, a black gang, what incentive do you have to go work for this guy? He has to offer you half of that 1.6 million because if not, you're not just going to go risk your life and the gang's life to go kill these new Mexican cartel leaders. Oh yeah. That was a diff- definitely big time. Are we sure? That was kind of like on that, that last fourth where you were just like, oh, I don't know. It was pretty much like after Shia LaBeouf's character gets like murdered. Gets- murdered because like that kind of came out of nowhere for me where they're like having that meeting where it's like okay like we got to figure out what we're doing here and then they're I thought like, he was oh, gonna yeah. escape i wish he would have escaped with him i wish he would have escaped too 
I was just like really upset that it happened. I was like, no way. They just came and blew up your spot, homie. Like that was like where just everything hit the fan for me. And I, my palms are just sweating. I was like, oh my gosh, dude. And he murders that dude's wife. Like, ugh. yeah. And, and just, when, no. when they're getting, when they're no. trying and kidnaps his kids and when they're trying to find his kids back, when they capture that dude and start putting his face to the road and he literally all of his face scrapes off and he looks like two face. They, the gore in this movie was intense. I love the action sequences, but like like you said, some amateur film mo- male moments, some amateur dialogue, and just some questions of like, are we sure this happens like this? That final fourth was just not good. This movie is very entertaining, though. Very entertaining. I, that I will say. Like, I was definitely interested in watching it. And it's one of those things where I, I would... You know, like I said, with the Shia parts, like I was really enjoying it and I enjoyed seeing like George Lopez in it. And, Every uh, time Shia yeah. was on the screen or George Lopez, they stole the show. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. Like George Lopez, like actually was very believable in his character role. Like I believed like that's who he was. And the lead guy was the one that was questionable. He was questionable because like a lot of those scenes that lacked, he was also in them. And Yeah. He, and but like, it, when Shia was gone, the movie felt different yeah but like the twist at the end is pretty pretty good um i i really didn't see it being something that was in court associated with the dad like the whole time i'm thinking like the dad's got to be dead like, yeah i thought the dad was, was dead too time. yeah but it turns out he was alive and this was like not necessarily a test from the dad but the dad seeing not helping to see if his son can overcome the hardships of this other gang because his dad definitely yeah. could have sent help help his way like, in a way, like, I feel like the, yeah, I mean, like, you know, talking about that, yeah, his dad definitely could have sent help, or I I would, I was waiting the whole time to hear about what I was going to get addressed with him, because I'm like, this dude's got to be dead, so, yeah, but, but, like, I, overall, with this movie, I think it comes down to, like, this is a movie that could be, like, considered a, a cult classic, I think this is, this movie is going to have people who love it and people who hate it. Like, I'm not going to go out here and like recommend this to everybody. Cause I don't know if it's going to be their cup of tea, but yeah. personally I liked it. No, I'm like, with I, you. I enjoy, and you know, this has really bad Rotten Tomatoes ratings and stuff like that. And it I understand does? like where, yeah, it does. It's 17%. Oof. Um, like I, I understand like where the bad ratings come in because like Lynn and I were saying, like there are some, really questionable shots and story writing and stuff like that. But I, I thought it was a fun ride that I would probably watch again if I don't have to pay for it. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I'm right there with you. It, it, it was, it was just an entertaining movie. I'd give it a solid seven out of 10. I would give it a seven out of 10 just out of the way I, I like it, but I do understand why people would rate it lower. No, I 100%. Some corny moments and some of the stuff doesn't hold up. I'm, I'm with you on that. Let's get to the Avatar review and finish up book two. So we start off with episode 16, Lake Lagai. While searching for Appa, the kids run into Jet Burr, torn about whether to trust him or not. Meanwhile, Zuko also hunts for Appa. Uh, finally having enough of the, the, uh, of the rules of the city and the obstruction of the Dai Li, the group decides to invade their constraints to find Appa, and they they do so. They run into Jet, although he does not behave as they would expect. He claims that he doesn't have the gang anymore and that he has information on Appa's whereabouts. The group almost departs the city after being uh, fed false information about Appa's whereabouts, but a chance encounter with Smeller B and Longshot reveals to Team Avatar that Jet has been arrested by the Dai Li a few weeks ago in brainwashed. brainwashed. Yep, they eventually bring break uh jet's brainwash uh underneath lake lagai in hopes of finding appa instead they find long fang of the Dai Li waiting for them declaring them enemies of the state elsewhere zuko discovers that ang is in the city looking for appa and sets out as the blue spirit to find him he finds appa before ang under lake lagai and plans to capture him but iroh arrives to confront him iroh argues with zuko that he never thinks things through Harking back to uh, his debacle of capturing Aang at the North, North Pole, Iroh asks if Zuko is chasing his own destiny or a destiny someone else is trying to force on him. Zuko screams and throws his broad swords down in destruction and in, uh, in frustration. Aang, Jet, and the group take on Long Fang in the Dai Li with Long Fang temporarily restoring drains. Jet's brainwashing. Aang is able to uh, free the uh, freedom fighter, which causes Jet to snap out of it and attack Long Fang. Jet is wounded as the result of Long Fang. 
as he escapes, the group pursues, which ends up them reuniting with Appa as he helps them deal with their remaining Dai Li agents. Uh, Zuko and Iroh exit the compound with Zuko tossing his blue spirit mask into the lake at Iroh's suggestion after freeing Appa. It was a big episode. Um, lots of, you know, of course we get the re- reuniting of Aang and Appa. But it was definitely huge for Zuko. And as we see even in the next episode as well, um, with the guru, which you know, which we'll talk about next, you know, Zuko really is kind of turning over a leaf. Uh, we kind of think that he's going one a new way. And then because Uncle Ira makes a lot of really great points with him almost dying and if it wasn't for team avatar he'd be dead yep um because he doesn't think things through like what was he going to do with oppa once he captured him how is he going to like not have this be noticeable and how does Um, he know his father's just going to accept him if he brings him the avatar which goes into something we'll talk about even more once we get into these episodes but that that's where that ball starts to get rolling with zuko um but Finally, they get a chance to get into the Earth King's ear. Yep. Um, and that and leads into this are, episode 17. Yeah, and so things are starting to come together for Team Avatar. But are they really? Because at the end of the episode, we hear that the Kyoshi Warriors have entered the palace. But are those the Kyoshi Warriors? No, it is not. No. Nope. Zula and her friends. Impersonating they, them. They have impersonated them, and that's kind of what goes into the next episode. Azula is starting to creep her way into Ba Sing Se. Their infiltration has worked um, also, as Team Avatar is spread out across the world. Also, Top's about to get captured. Or like... Yeah. Her mother Her mother sent a letter revealing the setup for her capture. Or did by, she? By Zen Fu and Master uh, Lu, while Long Fang is shown to be still in command of the Dai Li while in prison. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. episode seventeen, episode eighteen, the Earth King, super super good. It's setting up for a big season finale, which is a guru at the Eastern Temple helps Aang take the next steps in his Avatar journey. Soka meets his long lost father. Uh, Aang, uh, so basically, like I said, Aang travels to meet Guru Pathic, who trains him to master the Avatar state through unlocking his seven chakra. As the Earth King meets with uh, who he thinks are the Kyoshi Warriors, he accidentally reveals the team's plan to invade yeah. to Azula. Sokka reunites Sorry. with his father, and the two begin uh, retconning or be reconnecting Azula plots with May and Tai Lee to organize a coup d'etat to take down Ba Sing Se from the inside. Pothic leads Aang through intense experience of opening the chakras that uh, upon his body while processing needing to be completed without interruption. Uh, Tai Lee feed Dai Lee agents uh, information about their impersonating of Kyoshi warriors and Azula uh, sets her plan in motion. Um, Qatar, Qatar discovers Zuko and Iroh in the city, rushes to warn Suki only to find out that it's actually Azula. Katara is captured and Azula decides it's time to go after Zuko, uh, Zuko and Iroh. As Aang is about to reach enlightenment and able to go out into the Avatar state as well, he has a vision of Katara in danger and chooses to help her against Pathic's warning that he has locked his life. Very Star power, Wars. Cutting off him from the Avatar state altogether, Iroh and Zuko leave a message inviting them to serve tea to the Earth King. Aang picks up Sokka from the Chameleon. Bane flies to Bai Sing Se. Uh, Azula is brought to Long Faisal, who proposes that he can get Azula the Avatar in exchange for restoring the Earth King's trust in him. She is led back to the room by the Dai Li agent, smirking like, <laughs> I don't care about you guys. I'm about to control all of this. For sure. No, so- I mean, it's... It's a lot. You know, we also didn't mention there that Sokka gets reunited with his father. They're coming up with their plan with the Water Tribe. Um, but yeah, the Aang with the Guru is very Luke to Dagobah vibes, having to go back to save his friend, very Star Wars-esque. That's what I always think about when I when I watch this episode. Um, but yeah, Zuko and Uncle Iroh are having a really successful time with their tea shop, and they just wanted everything to go all right, but Katara had to ruin it. Yep. And, and then uh, that gets us into the final, final episode where Aang and Soka reunite with Toph. They set out to find Katara, though their fears are initially... Toph learned metal betting. Yep, Side she note. did. To, and Because she escaped from those homies. Though their fears are initially uh, calmed by the king still believing Azula's impersonation. Azula has been charged of the Dai Li by Longfang while the coup 
takes place. She begins to take rule with an iron fist. Iroh and Zuko arrive to the palace, but are greeted by Azula. Iroh is able to evade capture, but Zuko decides to stand and fight against Azula, though he's quickly overmatched by the Dai Li. Thrown in prison with Katara, Iroh finds Toph and asks for their help in rescuing Zuko as well as Katara. Katara uh, berates Zuko for trying to capture Aang and brings up the loss of her mother as the result of war, causing Zuko to respond. That's something we have in common, calming Katara's anger. Soft uh, Soka and Toph rush into the palace to warn the king of the coup, but they arrive as it's beginning with the Council of Five's great uh, generals being placed under house arrest by the Dai Li. Soka and Toph make it to the throne room only to be defeated by Zula, Mei, and Tai Li. As they and the king are led away, Long Fei arrives intent on double crossing Azula, though the Dai Li agents no longer answer to him. Azula sits on the throne after perfectly guessing Long Fei's long uh, plan. Um, Azula sits on the throne Yeah, after Long Faze uh, Climbed to power, at which point he Acknowledges being beaten at his own game Back in the Crystal Catacombs underneath the palace Katu- uh, Katara contemplates Using water from the North Pole Spirit Oasis given to her by Paku to heal Zuko's car, but Aang and Iroh arrive at the moment to rescue him. Azula arrives a short time later and traps Iroh, offering Zuko his honor if he joins her. Aang and Katara try to escape the catacombs, but are attacked by Azula, and later Zuko having made up his mind. Aang eventually has to go, let go of his attraction to Katara to conjure the Avatar state, but as he enters, is shot by Azula's lightning, killing him. Iroh steps in to help Katara escape with Aang, and is subsequently captured. Katara uses the spirit water on Aang's wound, seemingly bringing him back to life. Team Avatar and the Earth King fly over the wall into uh, defeat as the Earth Kingdom has fallen. We see Aang, man. Aang took his first major L, kind of like Luke Skywalker getting his hand cut. He ends up in like Leia saving him. Katara ends up saving him, gets his ass beat. But... The big thing of this to me is Zuko betraying Uncle Iroh and choosing his honor and thinking that his father would save him, which we thus see him learn to regret in season three. And he goes to try to talk to Iroh and Iroh's like, I'm not listening to it because you're not my nephew. But only once Zuko makes the right decision, that's when Iroh starts paying him attention again. But to me, seeing Zuko betray Iroh was heartbreaking for the for that was- again watching this. Yeah, it was definitely heartbreaking because they had just really gotten to um, oh, be point. super close, um, fa- almost father-son relationship. And we would seen that through the Tales of Bossing say that Uncle Iroh has really wanted that out of Zuko. Yep. Um, and for him to do that just after it seemed like they had turned a corner, it was, it was heartbreaking. Um, Zuko thinking that this is his path. This is kind of like a big turning point for him. And then, but as you, as you also said, for Aang, his first real defeat um, and kind of showing that even the Avatar state doesn't make everything perfect. Better, yeah. So, so that it could be beaten. And Aang almost, Aang almost ended the Avatar forever because if you die in the Avatar state, it's over. When Azula shot him in that lightning in the back, I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, it's like, and bro, had, good and thing, Azu- good thing Azula's Katara bad, didn't man. use that water, man. Right on Zuko, because then the world would have been over, would have been a waste. Yep, big waste. Would probably wouldn't have worked. Yep, Zuko would have stayed with that scar. Yeah, it just shows how badass Azula and May and Ty Lee are. For sure, that was some Game of Thrones level politicking. That was some Game of Thrones level. That was like. A- a Game of Thrones level episode for and sure. That's why Avatar: The Last Airbender can work so well as a live action TV show if they don't fuck it up. Which it seems like they're doing. But yeah. anyway, but Lovecraft I'm, Country. I'm excited to get into book three, which we will do next week. We're getting we're getting so close to finishing Fire Nation. The Avatar rewatch. Yes, we're getting in the Fire Nation, and when they come back, Aang has hair and he's on the run. But Episode two, Whitey's on the moon uh, of Lovecraft Country. While Letty and George uh, luxuriate in their new surroundings, Atticus, uh, or a.k.a. Tick, grows suspicious of their host. Man, what an episode, bro. Like, when they started ep- forgetting, like, about the monsters, I was like, what the fuck? How yeah, I was it? like, what the heck is, is this crazy magic or whatever? But, like, my thing with this episode 
was whenever I've tried to describe the show to people, I'm like, I don't really know what to describe to you because like, it seems like the next episode is going to change. And then again, this episode, I was like, okay, well maybe it's going to be like, he's coming up in the secret society. You know, he's going to get them to learn more about his heritage, blah, blah, blah. But they all die. Then they all die. So I'm just like, so what, what, what is this show now? Yeah. What, what happens next? So, you know, it's always been really intriguing and gets you thinking one thing and then, now you have to think oh. about a whole different thing. Flips uh, it on his head. But we find out that Atticus is the son of a slave owner. That's why these people want him. But it's this cult that's trying to use the blood of the <coughs> first generation slave owner to unlock the Adam tree or to unlock the Garden yeah, of Garden Eden, Eden. Yeah. so they can get immortality. And it almost works. It almost works, thus killing them. But I think the daughter's still alive. I don't think the Breathway daughter is dead because she kind of told him like, follow your instincts and take that chance. And I believe he saw the woman who was his great, great grandmother in his vision. And she kind of led it. She led him out of the destruction of that house, which everything came down. But I thought seeing that the cow birthing of those, those vampire creatures, I was like, what the fuck? What the fuck? I was like, yo, and the fact that they're using magic, putting a spell on Letty and uh, the brother and showing them that like, yo, y- y'all can forget this at the instant. Well, even taking him back in time in that moment where it was like they were watching them in cages almost. Yeah, I was like, yo. That was some weird fuck? shit. And then um, having Letty almost get raped by Tick, showing that, that that her fear is to be raped by man, which probably happened to her in her life. And then showing... Atticus fighting his love from South Korea and having to kill her. It was just like, damn, what a flashback. And then uh, the uncle's past lost love. Yeah. Which, we, which we'll probably never get to know more about. But um, we're going to have to deal with the uncle because he died because Atticus did not get to save the uncle in time. But that we do get, we, where they do it's find all Watchmeny. Yeah, they do find his father. Where it's all Watchmeny, where it's all the blue shit before all those people turn to... Uh, Turned to a stone. That shit was crazy. And how he that was, was pretty crazy. How he how he was transforming into like a tree. Yeah, it, it was a it was a wild sequence. And Michael you know, K. Like, Williams was really like, gonna... "I don't want you to come save me, man. Feel for Jonathan Majors. He had Delroy Lindo telling him, "I don't fuck with you and the Five Bloods." And now Michael K. Williams doesn't fuck with him. I don't know what's up <laughs> with Jonathan Majors and not having his fathers fuck with him in every role he does. Yeah, they're always crazy. But I mean, I guess what we find out there too is that his father really wasn't trying to get him to come there. It was yeah, always his, these the people, the Braithwaites. And his father was trying to handle it himself. Yeah. Man, so, I mean, crazy episode. Which, which again kind of changes the whole thought process of the show. So, I mean. And then they showed wh- the preview for the next episode. Like, how does Letty get all this money? Like, did they steal it from those people? Right. And. And what's what do they end up telling Hippolyta or yeah. Hippolyta or whatever her name is? That her uh, um, husband died. Ooh, sad, sad times at Ridgemont High. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that that's going to be a pretty crazy episode. I think that this show has really done a good job of keeping us on our toes. I think, you know, the first episode, of course, was a little bit better than this episode, but I you know, agree. the whole secret society thing was pretty, pretty wild. Yeah, it was. And the idea that they had, when they had to listen to him and you see, because at that time, those old white men did not want to listen to that black dude, but he was like, nah, I'm the descendant of the Braithwaite. You niggas better listen. Yeah, that was pretty crazy. I was like, where are you getting with this? Yeah, he, he got what he wanted, but in the end, they ended up getting shot and it caused him his uncle's life. His yeah, arrogance... The- his arrogance costed him his uncle's life. And I thought they were about to kill um, old Journey C- Smollett, too. Nah, they couldn't kill her. Like, she had. To, I was like, no way. She has to make it through. This isn't Tax Collector where they kill off the star with, with halfway through. No yeah, way. But, and again, the music was pretty incredible. The, even the, you know, the little sequences, the Whitey's on the moon thing. Yeah. Um, it, it's... It's interesting because like it works with what's going on in the show, but also it makes you think um, besides that, you know, just what the words that they're saying and stuff like that, you know, kind of gives you like some really different perspectives. Also, I mean, just the way they're handling 
race each episode. The first episode, we got Sundown uh, Towns. And this episode, we got slave masters uh, impregnating their slaves and having offshoots of sons. Like, that's it just it's it, the way that they're t- tying American history with horror and sci fi themes is just crazy. The one are we sure moment was like when the uncle was in that one room and he pulls that one book and then gets to go into that secret room. I'm like, how are nobody we sure? found it. How didn't Braithwaite, the uh, the young Braithwaite guy, didn't find him? Yeah, like how how are they, how do we know that they didn't know that he did that? And like, how are they going to put him in a room where he pulls a book and he gets something that that's so secret and important? It like, was probably for him to find. I feel maybe maybe yeah, but. Who knows? We shall see what happens with Lovecraft, but that's all I got on that. That episode was nuts. Um, but that's all we have for the, for this episode. It was definitely a fun week. The DC fandom gave us so much to talk about, and Tax Collector ended up being good. Pretty solid uh, movie. So I'm, I'm glad that we ended up watching that, but we're going to have a, a, a lot for you this week on Bros Who Think on Bros Who Think Network, as long as the hurricane doesn't completely knock us out. Yeah, um, we're gonna be doing the run it back with uh, talking about Goodfellas. Um, so be sure to to watch that when that on comes Thursday. out. Yes, sir. But you guys can follow me at Lynn BWT. Follow Bros Who Think at Bros Who Think. Be sure to check out the latest Bros Who Think podcast this upcoming Thursday. Like Schubert said as well. Check out the run it back. We're reviewing Goodfellas. If you are a fan of the Dragon Ball Super manga, we have a review out now. And there'll be a running back for the anime movie Ninja Scroll. So a lot of content coming out this week. But be sure to tune in to Pitch It next. I mean, to Bros Who Binge next week because we have a pitch it match between yeah. myself and Shamit Dua to see who goes to the conference finals to battle Charles Reese. It's going to be a good one. I'm excited to, to be doing that as well. It's going to be a big week yeah, for, I- um, for the podcast. Yes, sir. But that's all I got, Shuby. Super solid week and the DC fire is lit. Now I am hyped for the Batman to start refilming. Me too, man. Me too. And I hope that you guys reach out with us with any of your excitement about anything that you found at DC fandom or anything that you want to see us review or cover in the, in the, the weeks ahead. We are coming up on our 100th episode next week, too. So that's yeah, really man. exciting. The 100th episode. I'm excited. All right. But uh, I... You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at hubert 14 I hope everyone who's in the Louisiana Gulf Coast area stays safe. safe during these two hurricanes. And if your power is on, it's a good chance to catch up on a lot of really great TV. So um, everyone out there, have a great week. Stay safe. And as always, keep binging. <laughs>